Good morning. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us we worship our Lord and Savior today with divine service uh, setting three. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I want to point out today with our hymns, most of our hymns are doxology hymns. Two of them, the opening and distribution hymn, just the final verse is a doxology verse where we again stand in reverence to uh, triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But then our sermon hymn um, is the whole hymn is a doxology hymn, so we'll actually stand for the entire hymn for that part. And then all of those will again will conclude with the, the amen as our practice has been. As we begin praising our Lord this morning with our opening hymn. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us his forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, 
a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in his stead, and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the Kyrie. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, though we do not deserve your goodness, still you provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may acknowledge your gifts, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the 10th Sunday after Pentecost is from Isaiah chapter 55. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And he who has no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear that your soul may live, that I will make you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast sure love for David. Behold, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. Behold, you shall call a nation that you do not know, and a nation that did not know you shall run to you, because of the Lord Yahweh your God, and of the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. This is the word of our Lord.
Epistle for today is from Romans chapter 9. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience bears me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, my kinsmen according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from the race according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is God over all, blessed forever. Amen. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the Alleluia and a gospel reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. When Jesus heard about the death of John, he withdrew from there in a boat to a desolate place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. 
Now when it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the day is now over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They said to him, We have only five loaves here and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing. Then he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And they all ate and were satisfied. And he took up twelve baskets full of the broken pieces left over. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. This is the Gospel of our Lord. As we speak the truth in Christ, so we confess now our faith together with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We'll remain standing as we continue with singing our sermon hymn.
grace, mercy, and peace be to all from God our Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and our helper, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Last consideration today is from Ephesians 5, verse 19. It says, Addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. You may be seated. In the name of Jesus Christ, your people of God, music is a part of who us human beings are. You know, we all know music it stirs our souls and engages the heart. But music isn't just something that happens to us. It's something that we do. Human beings, we sing. And of course, not all of us are very good at keeping a tune. I know I'm not that good. I like to sing solo. Solo, you can't hear me. But we still sing because we love music, especially when it's a favorite song that comes on. You know, you see people rocking out in their cars a lot to, to music because a good song comes on. Or maybe we just hum it under our breath to the tunes that we hear others sing. But as human beings, we also sing together. You know, it's been true of societies all throughout the ages. You know, folk tunes, anthems, chants at sporting events. We come together and sing, stirring our hearts and souls, enabling people to express together what they love and long for. In some ways, modern technology has changed the way, the way we in society engage in music. You know, we now have instant access to like billions of songs from around the world. You know, I, I'm still uh, old enough, you know, that I have Walkmans, you know, like cassette tapes and then CD players. Whereas now, you know, it's all digital. You can download everything on your phone right there. You have it with you. You put the wireless earbuds in and you have your music 24-7. So, you know, as a result, we can pick and choose and listen to the music that piques our interest, what we would rather listen to. This means that the, the phenomenon of singing together, using our voices to sing one song with others near us, is becoming less common in our modern world. You know, if you're on a city bus or on a busy street corner in a big city, you know, 50 people are there, and they all have earbuds in their ears, and they're all listening to 50 different songs being played at one time rather than a group of people all singing together in one voice. This also means that the age-old Christian practice of singing together is becoming strange to people. And it's becoming old-fashioned in our world this day. You know, sometimes when visitors come to our church who aren't familiar with the church practices and our practices, you know, they find the whole idea of people singing together sometimes a little foreign, uncomfortable. Yet, despite its strangeness, we still do it. Yeah, it's part of history, but there's a reason why we do it. Why do we resist the modern trend to uh, individualize music and keep singing together when we meet for worship? Why does singing together matter so much to us as Christians? Well, music is a powerful tool. It's one of the most powerful and effective ways to actually learn about God. You know, when Saul was troubled by an evil spirit, it was the music from David that soothed his soul. When Paul and Silas were in prison for the sake of the gospel, they found encouragement in singing to the Lord. And after Jesus told his disciples that he would leave them soon, he concluded the Last Supper with a hymn. And the psalms and the hymns and the spiritual songs were Israel's response of praise and worship to God for taking them out of slavery and bring them into the promised land. So now our psalms, same psalms actually, and then the hymns and spiritual songs are our response of praise and worship to the Lord as well for all he's done for us. They are singing as a result of being fulfilled by the Spirit. It's about being who we are made to be in Jesus Christ for the sake of God and his purposes. And through his Holy Spirit, God is bringing us towards fulfillment of his plan of salvation. That's going to come to its full completion on the day he delivers us into new heavens and a new earth. But until then, it enables us to live for him and his purposes as his plan of salvation is still carried on through us because of Jesus. As it happens, you know, we still have work to do. Building one another up and growing together in our faith as the body of Christ. Yet this is not ultimately our own work. It's God's work. He's the one that has the plan. He's the one that fulfilled that plan through his son, Jesus. And he's the one that's carrying out that plan through us. And then it's God's spirit 
who brings us to faith and brings us to believe in Jesus Christ and strengthens us in Jesus Christ. So our singing by itself doesn't cause the Spirit then to work in us. Rather, it's the opposite. It's God's Spirit who has already begun a good work in us through the gospel that then causes us to birth forth in the singing and praise. That Christ's presence among us, empowered by His Spirit through faith in His Word, leads us to sing praises to the God who has saved us and loves us. If we get it the wrong way around, our singing actually ends up replacing the role of God's Holy Spirit. We will feel we need to work ourselves up into a certain emotional state through our singing, that then that's how we feel God, that, oh, if I just feel Him inside of me with my singing, then I know God is there. And God is amongst us, but that's actually disastrous to our faith. Because then we're basing our faith in God, presence, on our emotions, which are very unstable, rather than in God's truth, Jesus Christ, who is the ultimate root and foundation for us, the measure of God's presence amongst us. So we don't sing to God to cause Him to work in us. We sing because God is already at work in us. By His Spirit, bring us to trust and to know the Lord Jesus Christ and the message of the gospel. We sing because Jesus Christ went to the cross for us. We sing because Jesus rose from the grave for us. That's why we love singing, and we have so many hymns to sing at Christmas and Easter time. And maybe the service goes a little longer, but we have great hymns to sing because those are the two highest, joyous moments that we could sing. Praises to the Lord for sending His Son to be born as one of us and then to die and rise to save us for all eternity. Because our singing is a result of that work that Jesus did for us in our lives. And singing is also a, another form of speech. You know, singing involves building one another up through the use of words. As our Christian life together involves speaking the truth and love to one another, that means that we sing about the gospel of Jesus Christ. We sing about the implications of that saving gospel to us. We sing in a gospel-shaped way within our loving relationships with each other that are characterized by God's love for us in Jesus. As his church, as his body, we build one another up with the truth of the gospel. So therefore, the words that we sing point people to Jesus and not to ourselves and build them up in Jesus and not in how we are feeling or thinking. So singing together as the body of Christ in this way is at the core of our lives together as Christians. So we sing the hymns that we sing as songs to praise God, praising God for who He is and what He has done for us through Jesus and what He continues to do for us through the Spirit. We sing the truths about God and His actions to help drive those truths deep into our hearts and our souls and our being. We sing songs that come through the work of the Holy Spirit, Songs that only point us to Lord Jesus Christ and God the Father and the work of the Spirit. The songs, the hymns that speak the truth about God and teaches us to learn and love that truth. That is the key way the Holy Spirit works in our lives in our praise and adoration of God. And Christian music is one of the most powerful, enduring ways to teach about God and His saving work. I mean, even our Christmas hymns and Christmas songs, you hear them played out on the public radio. People are hearing about Jesus without even knowing they're hearing about Jesus and why we actually have the reason of Christmas, the birth of Jesus Christ. It's all of these Christian songs and hymns keep us focused on the gospel and focused on Jesus Christ and his saving work done for us. And singing, it gets, it gets under us, it gets in us and into our souls. So the words that we sing really do matter at a very detailed level. We repeat the words again and again and again, and we come to love and appreciate them. I mean, after you leave church, you ever find yourself during the week singing or humming one of the hymns we sung this week? Not knowing once in a while that popped up in your head all of a sudden? Or maybe when you're, when you're struggling, all you can do is think of a hymn 
or a song. You know, with, with the kids, we tell them, if you're afraid, just sing Jesus loves you. It reminds us that Jesus is with you and there is nothing to truly be afraid of. And this is also why we sing certain hymns every Sunday. See, every Sunday there's one central theme that always focuses us on what is being preached. And again, what's being preached is generally what's focused on the readings, except for the sermon series we're going through um, has its own set of uh, specific verses that we're focusing on. But in other words, even these Sundays, the theme, if you almost catch it, still involves these readings, and it involves the hymns, and it involves the prayers and other specific dynamics of our worship service. And so that when you leave here, that theme is then stuck in your head as you go out there into the world, and it's with you during the rest of the week. So when you come back again, there's another theme we focus on that is with you when you go throughout the week. And you come back again for another theme. So when I pick the hymns for Sunday, I find the hymns that focus on our readings and focus on what is being preached so that it all comes together as one whole service. And if you ever look at the actual hymns in the hymnal, I know we have the hymns on the screen here, but it doesn't show it on the screen in the hymnal. At the very bottom of the hymns, it actually posts the Bible verses that those hymns were taken from. And thankfully, I'll, I have a resource book that lists the Bible verses and then lists which hymns are connected to that Bible verse. So I know, oh, I'm preaching on Ephesians 5 today. What, what, what hymns are connected to that? The hymns we sung today are all connected back to that verse, especially the sermon hymn. And there too, we do from time to time sing unfamiliar hymns because they have to deal with the readings. I encourage you, as you sing the hymns, really look at the words that you are singing because it, it ties everything together. And who knows, maybe we sing these unfamiliar tunes well enough, it becomes a familiar one that you're singing throughout the week again. It's all because everything focuses on the one theme, and that one theme is always focused on God's holy word. And that's why the sermon hymn is often called the hymn of the day. It's the chief hymn of the service. Now, these are specifically selected hymns that are usually sung right before the sermon because it connects the gospel, it connects all the readings in the gospel reading, then it flows right through that sermon hymn right into the sermon, which again is all focused on one dynamic theme. And these hymns were specifically selected to provide commentary on those readings as prescribed during the 16th century Lutheran congregations. During the Reformation, they saw they come back to a lot of the hymns and hymn singing as a congregation. And so this hymn of the day, it actually supplements the readings so the congregation can focus on the thoughts of the theme of the day. See, its purpose in Luther's words is to proclaim the wonders that God has done, how his right arm, the victory, won. And actually, a lot of these hymns go back prior to the 16th century. You know, the, the hymn, All Glory, Laud, and Honor, that we sing on Palm Sunday? That goes back to the 8th century already. And yet we are still singing it today. Sing my tongue to glorious battle. It's a Good Friday hymn that we don't usually sing because it's unfamiliar. That goes back to the 6th century. Then the 9th century, the hymn Come Holy Ghost, Creator, Bless. That we it usually gets sung during ordinations and sometimes on Pentecost Sunday. See, a lot of these hymns are long before, established long before the Reformation. But then the Reformation really built and expounded upon this practice of the congregation singing together the hymns that are based upon the readings. And then they came to a lot of, Luther wrote a lot of hymns and a lot of other hymn writers came to see that the congregation needs to sing these hymns to the glory of the Lord. And then about the, uh, was it, ninth, no, 18th century, you know, Lutheran churches started getting away from this practice of singing hymns, especially the hymn of the day. Because impietism and enlightenment were coming around, and then it was more based upon feelings than it was the actual truth of God's word. So then in the 20th century, we said, no, 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 we got to get back to what the root and the core of what our beliefs is, and that is the word of God, and how we come to have all of the magnificent hymnals. And every time our else our hymnals get done too, 
they kind of, they add more hymnals to it. So yes, our hymnal grows every time we get a new hymnal because they see there's more greater hymns out there that can be added for us to sing to the glory of God. And we sing all of these with the heart, with our hearts to the Lord. Sing with your whole being, your whole mind, your will, your conscience, your soul, your emotions, everything that God created about you. Sing out from all of that to the Lord. For he has made you to be who you are in him through the blood of Jesus Christ. And as the Holy Spirit works in us, bringing us to believe the gospel of Jesus and to grow in hope and love, Christ is present among you. What more do you need to sing out in joy and thanksgiving? That he's dwelling in our hearts through faith and that causes us then to sing out in glory to our Lord out of our hearts. As our hearts are renewed and uplift and strengthened more and more, it overflows in song to the God who has saved us and loved us. Our singing together, it flows out of God's grace for us. Singing is about responding to God's grace that we get to receive here this morning. It's about being thankful for his gift of salvation and thankful for all the other gifts that he gives to us as our creator. And so singing is just a part of our whole life of thanksgiving. That's why we need to make sure that our singing as Christians is not isolated to our, our, our own private ways the rest of our lives, but rather our singing praise that God is meant to lead us into whole lives of thanksgiving together as the body of Christ, united in Him. If we sing praises to God and then we just go straight out and grumble and complain, We've just forgotten what we've sung about and the great truth that we've sung upon and left our lips and made it upon in our hearts and souls. That's why singing flows from, from, the, from the fulfillment of the Spirit. We sing as we speak to one another in song, building up, encouraging one another in God's love and His grace. It engages our hearts, our whole being, everything about us. Responding then to God's grace for who he has made us as one of his child. We sing about God and we sing to God himself on the basis of his grace to us in Jesus Christ. So no matter how you sound, sing out of your heart to the Lord today and every day. Amen. Now may the peace of God our Father guard your hearts, your minds, your whole being in our Savior Jesus Christ. As he fills you with the Holy Spirit to sing about him and to sing always to him. Amen. As now we rise and join in singing together in thanksgiving to him or offertory him. Lord God, we thank and praise you for all that you have blessed us with, especially that through your spirit we can respond to you in thanks and praise and our hymns and our singing for all you wonderfully give to us and bless us with, especially through your son, Jesus Christ. Continue to use our offerings given back to you, Lord, but also our, our songs and our livelihood and everything about us that you made us to be, Lord, so we give you the praise and glory and bring people to know more about your saving truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> we continue now with the prayers of God's Holy Church. Let us pray to our Father in Heaven for this day, for St. Paul Lutheran Church of Lapeer, for our nation, for those who need healing, those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, those coming to the Lord's table, 
and for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Father, your steadfast love is gracious and overflowing. Teach your people to look to you in every need, to be thankful for everything that you give them, and to know that no danger, trouble, or hardship can ever separate them from your love in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Father, we give you thanks in our praise and the songs that you have blessed us beyond what we deserve and given to us your church. Bless St. Paul Lutheran Church of Lapeer, its mission and its people, its leaders, and its pastor, giving them the ability to meet the needs that arise as they do the work you've given them to do in proclaiming the saving truth of your word. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Father, daily you bless us with abundance and freedom. Bless those who defend us from our enemies, who serve us in government, and who protect us in our communities, that they may discern the right path and lead us with godly wisdom, common sense, honor, and integrity. Lord, in your mercy. Father, visit us in your compassion. Deliver the sick from their infirmity, the troubled from their afflictions, the grieving from their sorrow, and the dying from their fear, especially to all who have requested our prayers, including those in our Bolton, for Cheryl Tryon recovering from surgery, for Hanukkah Zeiser, who is not recovering well, for the family and friends of Carol Villamore, Jody Mark's mom, who passed away, Continue to comfort them, Lord, and give them peace and assurance that all is rested upon your love and care through Jesus Christ. And we lift before you those whom we pray in our hearts now. Give them and us all strength and endurance that we may not despair but of confidence in your sufficient grace within your word and sacraments. May all who cry to you receive grace according to your will. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we are richly and daily surrounded with your love and care. Bless the families of our congregation and those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week, including Dennis Rotella, Ruth Liss, Rodney and Eileen Carlson, that as they celebrate another year of life and marriage, you continue to watch over them providing for all their needs and granting them joyful celebrations. Grant them another year of life for marriage to come if it be your will, so they may continue to cherish, grow, and abide in your love and saving grace. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Father, your son miraculously fed over 5,000 and satisfied them. We thank you for all you provide to support our bodies and lives, especially here in the holy body and blood of Jesus given for us. Give us eyes to see your mercies new every morning. And grant us grateful hearts that what we have received, we may generously share with others. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Father, let us seek you while you may be found. Call upon you in the day of salvation. And prepare, be prepared by your mercy for the day of judgment. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord and Savior, who was born, died, rose, and ascended, to now live and reign with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And in your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary. We should at all times and in all places, no matter who we are with, giving thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who on this day has overcome death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all those in heaven, including our faithful loved ones, we log to magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing.
up our Lord and trusting his promises, we faithfully pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the name we betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them all, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is in the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of our Lord be with you always. Amen. This is the true body of Jesus.
forgiveness in the heart and you sing your praises to him. Amen. This is the true body of Jesus Christ. And his death and resurrection for you.
the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, in your loving kindness you sent your only Son into our flesh. We give you thanks and praise that for his sake you've given us pardon and peace in the sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, so that we may praise you with our songs of thanksgiving. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, our God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless be the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and continue to fill you with songs of praise. May we say as we join singing together our closing hymn. Blessed morning to all on this 10th Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, you know, in high school, I was in choir, and um, I sang tenor because um, I sang ten or 15 miles from here. <laughs> well, come on, I got a better reaction at Grace this morning. <laughs> oh, and I got more jokes like that, too. But I'm not going to say them to you today. But thank you, uh, Dwayne, for, for singing for us during service today, using your talents as well, so I will clap. One of our ways we can praise our Lord for all he's done for us. Um, Sean and Fiona and baby Seamus are down in Florida. They moved down there last week and they're all settled in as they begin this week. I think he's getting installed today. Um, so thank you for their prayers. Um, what we're doing is, uh, yes, Don.
they thought maybe we would uh, maybe two or three little offerings for the rest of the month. Um, just for this handful of dropping, you know. Yep. Yeah, I think there's envelopes designated for Sean and Fiona uh, for their time with us for two months. We like to just reimburse him a little bit for, for his work. And so during this month, all three churches are collecting a special will offering for them that then we'll send directly to them during their time in Florida over Vicarage. So uh, thank you again, and it's wonderful that we had them again for another summer, even though it was short. And now uh, we uh, pray for their time down in Florida. They said it's really hot down there. <laughs> they missed the Michigan weather. <laughs> Um, but again, pray for their vicarage ahead. They'll keep us updated throughout the year how things are going. And then when they're done, then they'll head right back to St. Louis, and then they'll have for another year of school, and then they'll get their call to uh, serve full-time in a congregation or congregation somewhere uh, in the United States or around the world. So, But yes, again, we'll have a free will offering this month for them. Um, to thank them for their time uh, here serving with us. And also in the back of the church, yep, um, you're gonna, you, maybe you saw as you walked in, there's a board with a cross and branches and roots. That goes back to a sermon I preached upon a few weeks ago about God, the, the readings and God's word and how our faith is rooted in God's word. Our lives are rooted. And what I encouraged during that was to take a piece of paper and write your favorite Bible verse on there and then one word related to that verse and then post it on that board. And I hope that board will just be filled up with Bible verses because that's how important God's word is to us. And so then, then as it gets filled up, I encourage all of you then to go look at that board, see the verse, look it up, and see why that word um, was maybe important to that person. If you want to, write your name on there, then maybe then they'll come to you and say, hey, why did you write that verse? And like I said, mine was Mark 16, 15. I picked as my congregation verse because going to all the world and preach the good news to all creation, it seemed fitting for uh, a wannabe pastor at the time. <laughs> and so again... Please write your favorite Bible verses or other verses on there with one word so others can see and, and dive into God's word even more. I'm collecting script orders this week, so if you have a script order you'd like, uh, please hand that to me um, either today or by tomorrow so I can get those in. And then uh, I think that's about it. Was there anything else you had done or was that it with Sean? All right. Join us for fellowship over as, if you can as we go with a prayer and God's peace. Gracious Father in heaven. We thank and praise you today with our singing and our praises for all that you continue to do for us, especially through your Son, Jesus Christ. And as we go forth from here, may our singing continue to bring you praise and glory and honor so ours may too come to know you and your wonderful love for us and your grace that abounds so much into us, Lord. There isn't enough thanksgiving and singing we could do, but just what we are able to. We thank you, Lord, for giving us your spirit, especially now as we pray at a common table prayer. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let these gifts to us be blessed. All good thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Amen. Go in peace.